James Kaufman, World News Report today. Ladies and gentlemen, today is December 8th, 2025. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been super quiet here on Earth. We're taking a look at the planetary KP index. And we have no solar winds or plasma hitting Earth currently. Now, I wish I could say it was going to stay like that, but we know we have several coronal mass ejections inbound currently. We've had a very busy 48 hours, to say the least, and on the 9th tomorrow, we are expecting geomagnetic storms, and they've actually moved their forecast up to a G3 strong geomagnetic storm from the M8 solar flare that popped off on the 6th. Now, we've had a very busy 48 hours since then, and we'll go over that right now. It is currently right at 8.14 UTC time, about 2.14 a.m. Central Time here in the U.S., and this is the M8 that they expect to make uh, actual impact with Earth, dead strike, dead on, and that's going to be a fairly strong CME. They have moved the forecast up to a G3 strong geomagnetic storm. Now, on the 7th, we had a fairly quiet day. But to open up the 8th today, so far, we've had three M-class solar flares and an X 1.1-class solar flare. Oh, yes, you heard me correct. Three M-class solar flares and an X 1.1 class solar flare. And that's just within the first eight hours of the day. So we could have more activity going into the ninth. Again, we're supposed to be hit with a CME from this M8 at some point on the ninth, about midday on the ninth. And we're going to have several CMEs that have been generated today, the eighth that will impact us most probably as soon as the 10th and into the 11th. All right, this only is covering the X 1.1 solar flare. It looked like sunspot 4298, a simple sunspot, not the Delta class sunspot next to it, actually popped off and created an X 1.1 solar flare. We had an R3 radio blackout associated with that over parts of Australia and Indonesia, the east, if you will, and, well, they are expecting a coronal mass ejection inbound that will be geoeffective towards Earth. All right, ladies and gentlemen, heading over to spaceweatherlive.com, you can see that X1.14 to be exact, and they don't have the actual sunspot it was generated from yet, and we have had an M flare after that that's not even showing up here on the charts. So you'll see the two M flares that we had today, the M2.4, the M2, and the event that occurred after the X flare that's not actually listed yet. Uh, well, those came from AR4299 and 4294. Now, 4298, 4298 is a simple sunspot, and it appears the X 1.14 came from that simple sunspot group. Unbelievable. I will show you all that. Let's go back and see what that third M flare was about. Today we have a 15% chance of having an X-class solar flare. That ship has sailed. We've had three M-class solar flares already today. The 2.4, the 2, and the one we're about to take a look at. And of course we're running a C baseline. So that should be 100% in my opinion. Doesn't it seem like the sun's always over Australia and Indonesia when it pops off hard? This is that third M flare we talked about that's not registering yet. You can see it's still completing. It looks like another M1.86, very close to the M2s that we saw prior in the day. Here, this looks like an M. 2.5 here and an M 2.09 here and they did round them off at spaceweather.com 
So we're looking at a smaller M flare that just popped off after the X1.14 flare that I told y'all came from a simple sunspot. All I can say here is, wow, the X flare is going to have come from AR4298. These were Delta class sunspots. When I opened the program just a few minutes ago, they've been recategorized and now they're both simple sunspot groups. That's the massive complex that they compared to the Carrington group, AR4296 and AR4294. Although the X flare came from AR4298 and the other X flare came from AR4299 up here. So the Delta class sunspot and complex really never shot anything large at us and now it's a simple sunspot and sunspot complex wow a total of seven named sunspots with more coming around the limb on the earth facing side of our solar disk and we all know that our magnetic connection is 2d and that looks like the east side but it's the west side of the sun because of how we see it and as these sunspots get closer and closer to the west there's even more of a chance that the explosion itself might make its way down our geomagnetic connection to the sun that's on that limb and be geoeffective towards earth they can be directly facing us or they can be on that departing limb and both do us lots of harm all right taking a look at goes 19 solar ultraviolet imager 195 angstroms we're going to see that X flare that's generated from this area here. We're going to see a large filament up here that I believe. And let's see if we can get a better look here. I did have that X flare nailed down, but I did want to get that next flare in as well. We know what time it occurred, so we'll wait for it to get to that time period. And we're approaching that time period. And we should see there is the X flare right there from 98. And there was, well, whatever that was. Let's take another look at that. The filament eruption up here must have been the M flare. So you can actually see them both. There was the X flare. Followed by the film eruption right there. Something's covering it here. Take another look here. The X flare. Followed by the film eruption. And they put a patch over this. Man made it looks like. So we can't tell what's going on. Again the X flare. And then the rather large film eruption. Covered by what looks like a patch. All right, so this is the NOAA spiral, and it's only imaging or forecasting the M8 flare from the 6th, the three M flares today, and the X1.14 have not been modeled yet. But I want to show you all how strong and how dead center Earth is on this hit that's going to happen tomorrow on the 9th. And again, that's from the M8 on the 6th. Nothing has been modeled from today yet. The three M-class solar flares that aren't substantially strong and the X1.14 solar flare. We have to wait and see how that one comes out. I wanted to say that we will be having, if the Aurora Borealis's are vibrant and show up all around the globe. We're going to be having a contest on the 10th, the evening of the 10th, and probably again on the 12th with giveaways on both nights. So I uh, would love it if you guys were to take out your camera phones and point them north or south, depending on where you live on this globe, and see if anything shows up with that camera. Obviously, the cell phone enhances anything that we're not able to see with the human eye again we will have a contest and that's going to be on the 10th and then again on the 12th we should uh, at that point have all four of these coronal mass ejections uh, well either have impacted earth or 
have missed Earth. Let's hope for B, right? All right, so perhaps on the 8th, around 4 to 7 p.m. Central Time, they're looking to start the geomagnetic storms. The 9th is the big hit that I talked about with possible G3, probable G3, likely G3 on the 9th here, moderate to strong geomagnetic storms. And that's actually going to take us into the 10th. And by then, we're going to start getting hit by these other three M flares along with the X1.14 flare. So we're going to be busy through the 11th. And we'll have a contest the at 9 p.m. the evening of December 10th. And at 9 p.m. Central, the evening of December 12th. Both Aurora Borealis, Aurora Australis with prizes. All right. Believe it or not, this model is going to end right as but of course right as we're going to see there's going to be a cme but we can actually tell that there is a cme from the x1.1 and you'll see it pop out right there just after the event the sun is this little circle here so it's already traveled quite some distance here you can see it pop out right at the end of the feed at 554 there should be a very large coronal mass ejection ejected from the X1.14, and that's the giveaway right there. By tomorrow, you'll be able to see the entire event. Remember, the sun's just this little circle here, and then this is the cover for the lens so it doesn't get burnt out. All right, super quick looks at Discover and Ace, our two real-time wind, solar, and plasma satellites. They're at Lagrange Point 1. They orbit 1 million miles above Earth. And there's usually about 50 to 60 minutes of time after space weather hits these satellites before it hits Earth. So we always see it here first. What we see here is plasma has gone down from 2 down to just about nothing, 0.39. Solar wind started the day out at 560. And they have gone down to nothing. 381 as well. Temperature's completely normal. Our shields are up or angled north. And since we're above this line with the red line here, our shields are actually up as well. So that's nothing but good stuff that we're seeing here. Uh, we'll have to see what happens as these coronal mass ejections get closer to impacting Earth. ACE is the older of the two satellites. You can tell our shields are up because we're above the zero line here, the red line is. And they're actually tilted to the north, which is also awesome. So we have pretty good coverage right now, but nothing's hitting us right now, so it won't matter. Uh, we can see that plasma never went over about 5 centimeters cubed. It's down here way under 1 centimeter cubed right now. There is no plasma. So the wind started at about, well, around 600 this is really off the chart here uh and they're currently at about 400 maybe a little bit below that right at 400 so we have no solar winds no plasma and temperatures are normal remember that little thing right there is 98 and that's 94 and 96 this is actually a reverse polarity sunspot since it's in the southern hemisphere, it should always be black over white. And since you're seeing white over black, which is positive over negative, this, I don't see how this is simple. I guess when this picture was taken, it wasn't simple. That's the answer to that. It was still a Delta class sunspot. But this little puppy right here is responsible for, well, the X1.14. And at least one of the M flares came from here. The other two came from this, well, crap here, the Sunspot uh, spot Complex. It was made up of 4294 and 4296 right here, which is now, again, all simple. All right, Earth's right here in this position here. Anything that's pink, we have a geomagnetic connection to. So currently, Earth has a geomagnetic connection to Jupiter, Uranus, Eris and Neptune, all the gas giants except for Saturn. And, well, uh, 
it's in a pretty good spot with some big gas giants behind it to be flaring. As it moves closer in front of Jupiter here, there might even be more flaring going on. But right now we have a, a pretty good setup with a geomagnetic connection again to Jupiter, Uranus, Eris, and Neptune. Now, the moon plays a huge part in this. If it was directly behind us or directly in front of us, that would even add to the mix. With that said, folks, an X 1.14, three M-class solar flares, and we're only eight hours and 20 minutes through the day today, December 8th. 2025. God bless each and every one of y'all. Remember, Aurora Borealis pictures may be possible tomorrow evening, based on what we're seeing. Also, the evening of the 9th, 10th, and 11th. We should be having Aurora Borealis live shows with giveaways on the 10th, 9 p.m. Central, and on the 12th, 9 p.m. Central. I hope y'all take some pictures and send them in, because I'd love to give away some stuff. God bless, guys. Have a great one, and we will see you soon. Please give us a thumbs up. Please share it. And again, always remember that anything's possible. Bizarro world.